Somebody made the analogy that every month it's kind of like Pokemon, you choose one, choose your starter. Sauron, I choose you. Oh no, you're trash. Sauron used an ability to negate all your ongoing abilities. It was not effective. Sauron fainted. He even looks like a Pokemon. It's a perfect analogy. Welcome my friends back to Marvel Snap. Incredibly excited to be here again in January covering the top recommendations of the best cards to be able to pull out of the token shop, the best bang for your buck with Drew Barry here. How's it going, Drew? Yo, what's up, Teddy? Thanks for having me. I'm super stoked to be here. I watched your latest episode and it was awesome. So I'm really happy to dive into these cards. Incredible. Do you ever receive this question of, oh, is this card worth my tokens? Or uh, basically, that's the question. That's the question, isn't it? Every stream? Yes, pretty much like all the time. Um, and it, it's difficult, you know, because tokens are so valuable. You know, like, they're, like they got to be the most valuable resource in Marvel Snap. Um, so it's a big decision on what to spend your tokens on and which cards to pick. Oh, certainly. And it's a big decision whether you are free to play and really resource poor, or even if you are somebody who's always buying the battle pass, someone who's investing even more money into the hobby, the resource is so rare that you're not going to be able to keep up with everything releasing. So you do have to pick and choose. Hopefully these recommendations can help you guys build the best decks to be able to make your climb to infinite that much easier. Absolutely. And there's always new cards coming out. So I feel like a big like warning is while uh, I, I feel like Teddy and I are going to give some great recommendation recommendations here. Um, it's always also kind of worth holding on to your tokens if something doesn't excite you, uh, because there's going to be about four to five cards every single month, which is always really exciting to see. Exactly. But covering excitement levels, the recent announcement of cards dropping down in series has really captivated me. We get to see the cadence of cards decaying down series. They're calling it a drop and they're really shaking up the recommendations for this month. I try and keep the list very exclusive. We're only looking at the top 10 Series 3 cards that I would recommend purchasing with tokens with uh, admittedly a bloated section of honorable mentions just because there are so many solid Series 3 cards. This is not necessarily a knock against anybody who is not on the screen in front of you. It's just, as we said, you want to be so exclusive with spending this resource that these are the ones who made the cut. And headlined with She-Hulk here in the plug and play category, new face to Series 3. Drew, do you already have her? Are you gonna be rushing to pick her up? I do, and I did use tokens to get her. So I'm a first-hand experience. And just like you mentioned, she's dropping in series. So honestly, I'm fine with it because I feel like you still get the value of getting the card early. Uh, so I've been able to play with her for a few weeks now. Um, easily, easily, easily one of the best cards, I think, that was released, especially with uh, the collector's token announcement with the token shop. Um, a lot of people, I think, predicted that this would be the best Series 4 card. I feel like it's held true. Um, she can be run in almost any deck. Any deck that you end up just like maybe um, being cautious with your energy. Uh, maybe you need to skip a turn because you're running a later game curve. All of a sudden she's cheaper and you can play her out and it's, it's fantastic value. 10 power is nothing to scoff at. It's a really powerful card. Exactly. So she was a buy. She was a recommended buy in series four. She was my top recommended buy in series four. Coming down to series three, she is a steal. Like Drew said, you can plug and play oh, her yeah. in effectively anything. And especially in conjunction with some of the other cards we might be seeing later on on the list here. Um, just as a call out here, we are making the list with the drops in mind. So these drops are going to be happening estimated January 31st. The patch they've already couched might be delayed. It's going to be the patch that brings the friendly battles. And so we are looking ahead to when these cards drop. The ones that are marked with a drop have the gold border around them on the graphics. So if you see the gold border, they're not in this series now, but that is the recommendation that when they are in, when they go through the drop, we're recommending picking them up. So She-Hulk Series 4 or Series 3, but now that you know she's dropping down to Series 3, go ahead and wait until she is, but then definitely pick her up another card that came down drew was absorbing man uh chad peer pressured me to buy this guy when he was at uh series four and then zabu released and made me feel so much better about my purchase in series three how are you feeling about him where do you think he's gonna fall oh, out i i think he'll always be relevant you know if, if you can copy an on reveal effect there, there's already over like there's approximately like a hundred on reveal cards in the game that's a hundred synergies for absorbing man a hundred combos potentially obviously not every single one is positive or is is going to work with absorbing man but just as an example of the cards value and longevity they they constantly 
are printing on reveal cards and they're going to as they continue forward so i feel like it's a card that you can spend tokens on and always uh find return on that investment you know it's it's not a bad idea to pull the trigger on absorbing man and even though he he's dropping in a in a few weeks maybe worth holding right if you if you haven't quite picked him up yet um but uh but if you roll him in the chest or anything like that or even if you spent it early i think it's totally valuable it's, it's a fine purchase right right now if you have zabu suddenly everyone has discovered spider-man absorbing oh. man spider-man was already i think I was going to make a list with the most underrated cards and I was going to put Spider-Man on it. Now I can't do that. Everybody knows that <laughs> Spider-Man is the bane of their existence and Absorbing Man just kicks so hard. Now, would you put yeah. Absorbing Man, would you elevate him out of the honorable mentions into the amplifier um, category? We're putting Wong Mystique there now. These forced multipliers, they've been dominant in the meta, very time tested. Absorbing Man, he doesn't punch as hard as Wong, but he is more flexible than Wong. What, where do you feel like that kind of battle files out yeah i feel like he has the benefit so they both kind of get caught countered by cosmo right like a natural co counter to both but kind of similar to how shuri can feel a little bit better than wong in some cases like the fact that it's an on reveal and you have to hope that your opponent positions the cosmo correctly uh you can probably get away with it more often then wong is kind of like hey this is where i'm going to set up my play um, you can stop me here and you can do it with Enchanters or Cosmo, which can really, really hurt your setup. Um, so I feel like Absorbing Man's going to get away with a lot more. And they do. You're right. I never really thought about it that way, that they do kind of have similar effects. They're kind of, um, you know, one, one, one side of the coin each. Uh, but I, I think I think Absorbing Man's going to prove to be on top. We probably see more Wong now because it's Series 3. Players have more access to it. Yeah. But as that starts to change and Absorbing Man becomes Series 3, we might see that shift. Absorbing Man also has that extra flexibility. There are some things that you would not want to play at Wong's location to get doubled, but that you would want Absorbing Man to copy, like Brood right now is the most egregious offender. Or Spider-Man, exactly, right? It's a it's an effect oh. that you know, Wong doesn't help Spider-Man, but Absorbing Man helps Spider-Man. I think having both of these in your on-reveal toolbox is really going to help you out. And even if you're a player that's coming up quickly from Series 2, trying trying to use like the bones of the on-reveal suite, Absorbing Man or Wong is going to get you pretty far. Wong is more telegraphed, Absorbing Man a little bit more flexible puts you into a good spot. Something else that stands out to me here that we've got a leader recently uh, butchered and the, the balance changes. He lost one point, Drew. Yeah, um, I know. How will we ever play leader anymore? <laughs> leader is my number one recommend. It had been Destroyer. Destroyer was sitting on the throne yeah. of like, if you were coming out of series two, number one card to pick up was going to be Destroyer because you could play him with only series two cards and do incredibly well. Now it's leader because who needs to have the finely crafted combo deck when you can just play leader and you can copy the opponent's homework and get all of their meta cards onto your side of the board? Oh my gosh, he's insane. It's, it's just, it, it, you don't, just like you said, you don't need the cards. You just copy your opponents and it's fine. I think that's why, even though maybe we're slightly seeing a little bit less than we were b b the month prior um it's still you know being rated as one of the most frustrating cards to play against you just don't want your turn six to be totally controlled by your opponent uh, you don't want to uh, i find the worst thing is when i'm on turn five i now have to always consider what happens if my opponent leaders and yeah yeah I just don't, I don't love it. Like I just, I just, I'd rather be thinking about other things based on what their deck is, not that they just randomly plugged in leader. Um, so, but, but if we're talking about a smart buy and, and a powerful, impactful car that's going to help you climb the ranks, he's, he's still really good. Yeah, exactly. If you're somebody who's just trying to climb when you have a um, middling uh, collection level, my free-to-play account, I'm using a lot of leader. We climbed rank 70 to rank 80 on leader ramp. So fair to call out the electro here as very pivotal um, climbing card. But that goes to any energy cheat. If we scan, we're looking at Wave and Sarah as top picks for plug-and-play cards. Electro's made honorable mention. Psylocke is here because the graphic was getting a little bit cluttered. 
<laughs> and Zabu <laughs> is not here because he's in a higher series. So honestly, if it's an energy cheat, it is worth a buy. It can get you very far. That just seems to be the way that the devs are pushing you to want to play the game in the higher pools. Because none of these energy cheats, well, Sarah lost one point as well, but that didn't really take her down. None of the energy cheats have really been nerfed. I actually would love to raise a question to you, Teddy. I know you're a big advocate for Patriot going down, and I'm sure we'll get to Patriot in a second here, but uh, going down to series two. What do you think, and you can even take your pick on it, but what do you think about dropping one of the energy cheat cards um, using maybe Electro as an example? down to series two so that earlier on you have that option to ramp up. I like the idea of it being Electro as the ramp build. The Psylocke is more niche and really she just plays into being able to cheat out. And she's still fun for the ramping capabilities, but having that different archetype identity of ramp being in series two, I think would be pretty fun. I would have to double check what you're ramping into because right now you can leech, right? Leech, you would go um, Electro on three, Leech on four, and then do you have an on reveal six cost on five? Because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for Dr. Doom into Odin or Leader into Odin. And if you don't have that, I don't know if Ramp survives pool two when they just play Double Dinosaur and produce more points than you anyway. <laughs> true, very true. I can imagine maybe there's, yeah, I don't know, actually, maybe some Onslaught shenanigans to be had. Um, yeah, maybe maybe the combinations aren't quite there and that's why they don't really want to bother. You could even honestly maybe even Electro and then pass and then do uh, Infinite on turn five and then just do play another six drop on turn six or something along those lines. Um, but I like the Electro pick maybe because it kind of shows discipline when what the cost of ramping, you know, you, you have an ongoing card, you have to find a way to destroy it or somehow with the locations. Uh, but you're going to deal with that on negative ongoing effect, but you get the plus energy and you can work your decks around it with that way. So I thought that would be kind of uh, interesting if one of those was dropped down. Uh, but sorry, I got a little bit off topic there. <laughs> uh, I, no, I, I, just I think, think it certainly would be interesting. Yeah. If you're looking at Series 2 as the training grounds of getting people introduced to the more um, a larger variety of decks and different game effects, then having an energy cheat in there, and especially Electro to introduce the ramp archetype as something to play around with in that uh, Series 2 zone, I think would be excellent. Uh, I think it yeah. would, because otherwise Series 2 does get kind of stale. It's Infinite, it, it is um, Dino, and then those the couple hipster movement players and the couple hipster Odin players, right? Yeah, totally. And it's actually such a small pool. I think it's like 50-something-ish uh, cards. Um, so I find even after you've collected all of Series 2, your decks haven't changed that much. Maybe you've upgraded a few, but it's not like a drastically different archetype that you've established because you unlocked X card. Not not too many anyhow compared to Series 3 when it, the floodgates just open. It's like, okay, what card do I get next and build a deck with it? Um, so I feel like they could start to, and I, th I think they eventually will, but start to bring down some of those cards and uh, open up Series 2 a little bit more. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. And as you were keying off of in pre last month, I said that Patriot, I think, should drop down. Yeah. So if we look over at the cornerstone cards, these guys are honestly the shakiest set of my recommendations out of this batch. I think the Patriot is probably the actually the leader out of this group of four of a card that as a single piece can really up your deck potential into a meta list. The Death and Dracula are looking pretty stellar. Destroyer, how do you feel about ongoing Destroyer? He's old hat, right? He's old hat at this oh, point, but I yeah. see it as he's experienced. Maybe I am hanging on to the memory of what Destroyer has done to me in past seasons too much, but if anybody's yeah, going to get know. cut in next month's, Destroyer's the one who's on the chopping block, I feel like. I would agree. I would agree, and uh, in my chat would know that like I just hate the uh, Destroyer ongoing deck because I was loving Death Wave at the time. Uh, so yeah. every time it felt like armor was getting dropped down and stopping me, and then maybe Professor X later on and the Destroyer to win it off. It's funny how, and I don't know how much this impacted the card, but that one power nerf back back in the day with with Destroyer seemed to actually make a huge difference. Um, and, and then amongst other things, the meta kind of shifting, a few new cards being released, the token shop, like there was a, like a variety of influences to change this card's strength. Um, but I, I agree with you. I think this one would fall off eventually, which is kind of sad because about two months ago, it was one of the top recommendations, I would say. Yeah, he's in a very interesting point. I think 
part of the strength of the deck is how solid the rest of his control cards end up being. And right yeah. now, people can kind of dodge around now when Death Wave was everything. Then Destroyer was like, well, I beat you. Um, but yeah, he's very capped. Like, with that one point down, he just produces X amount of points. His ceiling is low, um, and then it's how consistently he can find his control pieces to really leverage up against the opponents. Maybe a new control card comes around and he takes off again. Or some other future energy cheat. Who knows? I know it's yep. not going to be MODOK, but who knows farther <laughs> down in the future. Yeah, just get rid of uh, Destroyer from your hand. Why not? <laughs> exactly. We just need a null for discarded cards and then destroyers yes. back in. Oh, that sounds man, like a great mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> Newverse, plug your ears. Newverse, plug your ears. Don't get any ideas. Yeah. We'll talk about null <laughs> later on. And to close off this Series 3 discussion here, I have to say Zero and Red Skull bumping up as honorable mentions here. They're brothers. You got to run them together. Um, but with Arrow losing a step on her recent nerf, if you were running Arrow for the control effect, I think that she's still the girl for you. If you were running Arrow because you're like, I need a five cost, I actually think that you should start looking at Red Skull because he's just so dang efficient. He's starting to crop up everywhere. It is so fun too. What do you think, Drew? Oh, dude, one of the most underrated cards for months, I, th I feel. I, I remember when I first unlocked this card when he was actually only 14 power at the time, I still thought he was incredibly strong. Um, you know, just you just kind of have to find the right spots to play him. It's not even the right situation. It's just playing him at the right location that your opponent maybe isn't um, willing to match that power output or play a lot of cards. Maybe they're playing a little bit slower. Um, but geez, like when you can uh, not spend your last turn and play 15 power, like that is nuts. And then we already see, unfortunately, she's a uh, more expensive card, but we already see Shuri. You know, Shuri in combination with Red Skull is just incredible amounts of power that you likely just win the lane just from that combination alone so um yeah i'm i actually am really happy to see red skull getting some love and uh and zero as well zero as well because he's an archetype and it should perform a little bit better than it has in the past i think yeah especially with the shuri you can just outrun people the way that like um black panther uh wong was doing where if they don't have the shang chi or the control answer like you just win you can't top 60 uh, or like just the 30 point red school copied by the taskmaster etc it's nuts yeah exactly and then the zero honestly is positioned very happily with being above tempo himself and if he negates just like um, ebony maw or if he cuts into the lizard or the max there's a number of other cards that are up tempo besides the red skull where i find myself just wanting extra zeros I guess that's where Sauron is supposed to come in, but we'll be getting <laughs> yeah. to him later as well. I know. I feel that way every time I run a zero deck. I'm like, great, I have all these abilities I want to get rid of, but I never draw zero. <laughs> My favorite moment was on Luke's bar was when I could just start cycling the zeros and I ended up with like the whole board zeroed out with my best cards. That was pretty fun. <laughs> so good so good i would love a card in the future not to speculate on on future potential cards but one that uh would empower itself based on the amount of silence cards on the field it's a little triangle effect that shows on the card yeah um, imagine a card that got plus two power for each one of those on the field so you could like leech your opponent's hand or zero your own hand cards or what have you you know like just all kinds of ways and oh well, that'd be pretty fun it would add to the zero archetype for sure I love it. I love it. You get Zero and Leech together to form the truly uh, toxic deck of all decks. <laughs> yeah. Moving forward to Series 4, just like She-Hulk was really looking like she's going to dominate the, the top recommendation of being acquired as a Series 3 card, we had a number of cards that dropped down from Series 5. Some of these, like the Shuri and the Bast, these were cards that were on the edge of being recommended to be purchased for the 5k exorbitant price and they were making a splash in the meta now at series four these are just bargain prices so we have these three golden girls on the left the shuri the valkyrie the best they fit into different archetypes um well the valkyrie and the best pair together very well but shuri is doing off on her own her own mission with red skull and infinite and she hulk frankly oh man these cards coming down, I can't wait to be able to play with these. Oh my gosh, these are some of the most powerful cards. I do own uh, Bast and Shuri, and I can vouch for their power levels. I would say 
more so Shuri because of her flexibility to be added in any deck and just giving that double power to pretty well any card that you've probably set your deck up for is going to give you a good return. Um, so it's just it's just great value for a turn four play. Uh, and then Bast, I find a little bit more niche. I find you have to build the deck for it-esque. But really, when you add up the power total that she gives to the cards, and if you're able to play just a few of those, for a one drop, it's it's through the roof. The, uh, the, the power ratio is insane. Uh, the only one I haven't played with is Valkyrie, but I've been smacked by that Rainbow Road a couple times. And uh, <laughs> I can tell you, she feels pretty powerful. Yeah, her with the reset is so amazing. With Shuri, you might be saying, sure, like Shang-Chi can level whatever you play down, but if you tech the deck right, the opponent's not going to have enough Shang-Chi's to stop you because then you get the Taskmaster or the Zola in there, or you're even playing Vision, just Shuri into Vision, and then you have the flexibility of where you play it, and then Shuri getting discounted right now by the Zabu is creating some pretty crazy stuff. Bast with the Mr. Negative is really holding Mr. Negative in the meta because, yeah, for the one cost, her stat is insane. If the only target that she hits that's then beneficial from the plus three is Mr. Negative, that already puts her at a one, what is that, a one five stat line, which is crazy. Oh, yeah. And oh, then, yeah. oh, she tagged Iron Man as well, who's going to double his plus oh. three. Okay, it's lights out, yeah. right? Like, Bast is nuts. And the Valkyrie. Yeah, go oh, ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say the best you hit Iron Man and then and Mystique in the hand. Yeah. You get Iron Man on five Mystique. Oh my gosh. Yes. So that's the thing is that Bast has the extra flexibility of assisting with Cerebro 3s is pretty niche, but then the Iron Man, the Mystique heavy lists, um, some of the Zoo lists as well. So she does have more flexibility than just Mr. Negative. And then Valkyrie is doing the same thing, but she's doing it retroactively. If you missed your opportunity on the Bast, you can still come in, level your opponent, but then buff up your Iron Man who's doubling your stat line. So you should be able to outrun the opponent pretty handily. Now, slotting over Fanboy Special, Super Scroll is the other card moving down. I I thought he was just bad in Series 5, and I made the caveat to defend myself that he was going to be a weather vane to the meta. Turns out right now, the meta is the best it could ever be for him. When everybody is running either Zabu or uh, Sarah, then Super Scroll just being able to pick up that energy cheat feels pretty fantastic. Also with Iron Man making a little bit of a return. Have you gotten to play at all with Super Scroll? I have not. I don't own this card yet. I don't even think I've I have gained it from a random effect just yet. Um, but I have seen it played. And it does feel like the hit or miss because you're just kind of hoping that uh, your opponent's obviously running some ongoing effects. But I think, like you said, Zabu is everywhere. The cat's out and about. And yeah. <laughs> so you get value right away there um, if you have a, four, a couple of four drops. Um, so I feel like he's always going to be maybe a bit niche, you know, just maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I'm totally sold on this one. I don't know if it showed up in my shop and it was 3k tokens. I don't know if I'd buy, but, but maybe I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge. If you're really into that countering your opponent style of gameplay, then this might just be the one for you. Um, it can mix for some crazy moments though. That's for sure. Yeah, it's kind of a high roll if you could pick it up, but he could also be a consistency element for the Zabu deck yourself. He's only a two cost if you've developed your own Zabu, and then you'll be picking up whatever Ooh. the opponent is playing. But it is, it's really hard to play around when the opponent knows better than you what your card's going to do. <laughs> so yep. there's some, there's certainly some balance there. He's not going to get too out of hand, but like I said, this one, the meta is now if you want to be able to create some crazy moments with Super Scroll. So that's why he kind of elevated himself here. Helicarrier also has been elevated. I had it down in Just Bad previously. There have been some YouTubers who have devoted, it seems like, their entire life mission to make Helicarrier work. And honestly, <laughs> proof to their ingenuity that they've actually created some lists that get the work done. So it's created enough of a cult following that I brought it into the fanboy special category. You're running this in a very set uh, list, and even then, it still could be a little bit shaky, but the Helicarrier can be pretty cool. And honestly, I saw a variant art of the Helicarrier that was so cool. I was like, well, maybe I have to try it now. Ah, uh, what, what, which one was it? Was the, I've seen the pixel one, pretty rad. It was like a future tech, some kind of, maybe it was an alternate oh, earth one where no. it was just, they just still looked so aggressive and like okay. jumping out of the card. It was beautiful. beautiful. Tell you, I gotta be totally honest with you. When a, when a new card comes out and it has gorgeous art as the variants, yeah. it sways me. 
yeah, it convinces it can help. me. <laughs> exactly. Now we've got the Black Panther who has dropped down as well, but we're leaving him on the wait for sale for now. The understood cadence for the Battle Pass cards is that every month they're going to be a part of the drop. And so while he does form a very solid list with Wong and Zola, uh, this list is pretty rote. It's pretty susceptible to control. And because you know that he's going to be coming down next month as well, I wouldn't be spending the tokens on him. Yeah, it's 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 in a bit of a tough spot. Um, I really like Black Panther personally, but um, but I don't know if 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 I didn't currently own him, if I would cough up the tokens for this card just just right now. Um, but if you are if you did pull him or you do have him, um, and you're happy to have Shuri, it's a great combination. Uh, especially if you're running it with actually that red skull um, then you can even get zero in there for a little bit of insurance on what to do and you just kind of mix and play one of those options i found that deck has been pretty successful for me um, oh i was it, gonna it, say zabu wong into shuri into panther would be insane <laughs> that's the that's the deck right there yeah it's pretty it's pretty consistent and then you throw arnim zola on top of there so you have the wong black panther arnim zola combo but as well you have a shuri red skull arnim zola combo or something like, like there's a lot of flexibility in the cards with that deck so in saying that it almost proves that you don't necessarily need to cough up the tokens for Black Panther because there's other options in that deck that work together. So I don't feel like you should feel pressured to get this card. You can find alternative options. Or honestly, I think Shuri is the bigger play in that kind of deck uh, than Black Panther is. He's just kind of the beneficiary from the power boost, whereas Shuri is the playmaker. Yeah, exactly. Shuri is certainly the higher recommendation and probably more flexible as well. And then with her, uh, her big brother becoming a little bit cheaper in the future, you can optimize your list later on and still find success in the now. We've got Agent Paulson in the wait for sale. I think he is the best of the agents. Well, yeah. uh, Agent 13 might be better. Who would you put as Ooh. the best of the agents? Agent 13. Yeah. You bring up a point, but purely because she's one. She's a one two oh, stat I line. I was going to say because I have a soft just... spot for blondes, but yeah, the one two <laughs> stat line is pretty great. <laughs> But Agent nice. Coulson, if you can establish the uh, Quinjet, is actually kind of nuts. You get the four cost for three and the five cost for four. Well, you can jump to the five cost immediately with the Quinjet developed. And I've seen him beat me up a, a couple times. So yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm I'm not very courageous when it comes to random effects. I always feel like they burn me. Uh, so I get nervous whenever I try to put something together that is is random. Um, but I guess there's there's kind of the fail safe in that you don't actually have to play the cards and most people run this kind of uh, Card in a deck that doesn't need to play the cards It just needs cards in its hand and he does give you two when playing one So you do get a positive hand ratio, you know, you're gonna end up with more cards in your hand. So um, Yeah, I would, I would agree. He's he feels a little bit better than some of the other ones I think like Maria Hill for instance, like I don't, I'm not a big fan of that one <laughs> Yeah, Maria Hill down in the just bad alongside Umbaku and Orca. Oh, these guys are stinkers. I'm not even going to recommend these guys as series three cards. Um, they just don't feel like they have a place. Orca, maybe. I saw Teal she was running some kind of list where he was pairing the Orca with like a ramp destroyer ongoing synergy list to give it a little bit more consistency. But even that felt like a bit of a stretch to me because the Orca, <laughs> if he's solo in a lane, how often is he actually winning that lane? He needs to be, I feel like he needs to be cheaper. If you want to run a solo lane, I feel like Namor is more interesting. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I, w I held out a little bit of hope on this card because it had the bug or whatever was going on. So they delayed the release. And I, I didn't think it was going to get changed, but I thought maybe just because maybe we're just, we're not playing with it just yet. There's, there might be hope for Orca. There just might be hope. And I think it has already very swiftly within, a, I think a week has proven uh, to not be the case and that he's probably one of the worst of the entire bunch in terms of spending collector's tokens on, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, so his, his little brother or little assistant of Tuma is still up here in the wait for sale category just because he's so much easier to be able to play around either zeroing out his ability or playing him alongside armor. And then with the premium stat line not tied to the ability, that's where Shuri can really amp him up or any of these other effects that are playing around with the really big stat lines. So Atuma is remaining above the Orca here. It's not Atuma, is what my chat always tells me. <laughs> um, but I've actually had a little bit of success running him myself. And I think with more uh, text, well, Sauron doesn't turn him off. 
But if Sauron is hitting the rest of your deck, it opens up your zero to be able to hit the Atuma. I think there's more future for him. Theory's five cards here. We've gotten a lot more time to play around with these. It has been set. Galactus and Thanos are the big bats. They will always be series five. They will never drop down. If you want them, you're gonna have to cough up the full amount of tokens. Honestly, I feel okay about this. It, it prevents you from ever having buyer's remorse, right? If you're gonna chase after these guys, you're gonna pay the full price. There was no sense of, oh, if I'd waited, I could have gotten a better deal, which is gonna be the case for all of these other ones. So recommendations for any series five card, it definitely comes at an insane premium. <laughs> because you know that these are going to be downgraded eventually. And then we're also gonna do some theory crafting around the new cards to release this month that have not released yet. Uh, spoilers, we're putting them mostly in the wait for sale category because I'm not too excited about anybody besides Sauron. Drew, what, what do you think about uh, Sauron and have you gotten to see him at all? I've had him played in I think one game against me. Oh really? So fun fact, I, I wish I could almost show you right now, but in my collection, if I still filter by quality and, and whatever the unknown, he's still silhouette. Yeah, he's still grayed out. I had oh, to see the card. Never before seen. I have yet to see the card. Yeah, never before seen. I'm waiting for that big epic moment where it's like, new card, <laughs> two weeks later. <laughs> so, so. Only in Marvel Snap will the newest cards come out with the least fanfare. I Good didn't show. even, they didn't even run a slide on the background that he was released. I only saw a oh. TLSG notification on YouTube to know that he entered the game. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, the disrespect. It's, it's, it's too bad. It's it almost actually, marketing malpractice at the way they're releasing cards. Yeah. And there's so much hype at the beginning of the month because it's like, oh, you can look forward to these cards. Okay. Well, that's great. But. <laughs> <laughs> what about when they actually enter the game? What then? Um, so I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him. Uh, but I have watched footage of him from other uh, content creators and stuff, which is awesome that I can kind of experience it through that lens. And uh, I think he's okay. I, I, I think I, I completely agree with your assessment here that he's one of the better of, the, of this month uh, to pick up um, because he fits into that zero archetype deck which is already kind of growing in power so it's just kind of like a nice layup a little bit more consistency i actually didn't uh, read the card correctly in the beginning i thought it only affected your deck similar to mr negative but it affects your hand too which is just so good and it, it removes all the abilities so i think like electro for instance and this isn't even a positive but just for clarification uh he would not bestow his plus one uh, energy from his on reveal that also gets removed it's all abilities anyways just it was something that came up uh, with my chat and we were going back and forth trying to figure it out and that happens to be the case yeah he will completely blank out any card with an ongoing ability to the point that like patriot would be able to uh to buff it this uh. is the is the zero to hero list gonna start running patriot with the sauron that would be crazy but that list really is at the, the tip of the spear of the meta right now with what shuri can do and just the stat lines there and then sauron helping you out so if you love that archetype then you could get the sauron you're going to be able to get that badge the first edition sauron for yeah. you there <laughs> um outside of that i don't really see a use um oh man i gotta and, see these badges teddy yes. i'm real curious about what these badges look like because we right even now know all do we know if they're going to so. be in game or if they're going to only be in your personal collection? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I have mixed feelings, man, because I like the way my cards look. Yeah. I work hard towards the look of these cards. If all of a sudden they have this weird badge, like I gotta, I gotta see what it looks like. Can I toggle it off or on? Like I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. And it also just feels like pity me. I spent too much money too soon. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So I don't know. Or you got incredibly lucky. But yeah, that would be great. Run your yeah. your first edition. <laughs> uh, she devil here everybody's like okay okay oh, yeah uh, wow you got a whale in these yeah <laughs> this part of the ocean yeah. can't help yourself can you get a hobby oh <laughs> man yeah we'll cover the rest through dazzler shadow king um she devil as well but looking toward the top of what we have here galactus and null uh they are the king's incredibly high win rate galactus got hit with the nerf bat he's actually down to 6-3 didn't update the graphic here but it hasn't slowed him down at all um, and then it's the really the pairing with the null. So recommending is hard because it's such an expensive list. It has the most expensive list as far as expense goes here in, in Snap. But when you get it together, the win rate is just crazy. 
the devs have said that Galactus is still on the watch list, um, which makes me caution just maybe a little bit more saving up for him, but I think they're always going to want him to be in a position where he's good because he's so much of a chase card. So even if they do get future changes, hopefully it just brings in a little bit more counterplay to him, and I think that he's still going to be excellent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I do have Galactus. I did pull the trigger. I think it was one of my first ones that I ended up with in the token shop, which I was very excited about. Um, it is a very good card, and I agree that they should continue to watch it in the sense that if it ever became truly meta, like if it was at the top dominating, you need this card to perform well or something along those lines, then it's never going to really feel good to play against that and lose repeatedly. Um, but the only thing I will say, having played the deck quite a bit, is that there's consistency issues. I feel like a lot of the top decks end up with consistency issues, for instance. But with Galactus, you need a few things. You need uh, Galactus, of course, but then you also need Ramp so that you can play him on turn five, preferably, uh, dependent on the locations, maybe Lembo Road or something. But on average, you're going to need that Ramp. And then you also need your Finisher to play after because I've actually played a lot of games where uh, I didn't draw that sure i destroyed my opponent's entire board but they were tucking away a couple of good cards in their hand and they end up beating me um so it can be a bit difficult ironically this galactus nerf i feel like kind of indirectly buffed him because in those instances you don't want priority uh, if your opponent can have priority the better so that uh, you don't run the risk of getting your null destroyed by shang chi so there's just a few nuances there uh, that you can avoid with less power. So I feel like, to your point, the power change in Galactus did absolutely nothing. Uh, it's debatable between nerf and a buff, so it's just kind of just leave it as is. Um, but it is a good buy. And also, as you mentioned earlier, he's not dropping. So, you know, it, it's never going to feel too bad if you spend the tokens on him and you get to play with him because he's not going anywhere. Exactly, and so if you get him now, you get him in the full might kneel before Galactus when everybody <laughs> put the fear of Galactus into people, man. I've gotten burned by Galactus so many times, I don't have him. The Steam escape key bug of unpinning your card kept me from getting him, so oh, I got Thanos instead. No. Um, and it really does just feel terrible to play against, I feel like. It's the, the League of Legends balance philosophy of things don't just need to feel bad. Like, they don't just need to feel good to play, but they need, need to feel good to play against. And Galactus does not feel good to play against for so many lists. So many lists need flexibility between locations to get any kind of a winning game plan together, and Galactus is like, nah, I just played nothing on my first four turns, and now you lose. I was like, what? It's just, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll be interested to see where he alters or what, like, are they going to completely redesign him? Do they just tool around, maybe make him a zero, maybe make him a negative power? I don't know. We'll see, but for now, still the recommendation. And then we have the Hawk. Oh, I'm a Hawk fanboy. I picked him yeah. up immediately. We were theory crafting oh. in the Discord. We made a bounce list that was making him work. And then Zabu came out and was like, you're the meta. And he <laughs> really is. The Zabu Hawk rock slide list is just disgusting because it can produce such high power. And then the joke has always been that the rock slide and Korg, the rocks don't do anything. Well, you know, when you're dumping five rocks into the opponent's list, they're actually playing up against Subterranea because that's what your deck is doing. And you're not necessarily going to see that control, but having been on the receiving end a couple of times, the rocks actually slow you down as well. And so this Hawk list is just amazing. Oh, I know that firsthand experience. Subterranea, I feel like I draw four rocks every time at least. So if somebody's shoving Subterranea into my deck, yeah, I town, I'm never going to draw my cards. <laughs> so I unfortunately don't have Dark Hawk. Um, he looks excellent. And I think he's proven to be much better than early expectations, uh, which is actually just awesome to see that uh, we don't always have the best reads on the cards when they first come out. You know, like it's you got to see what, what's going on with the meta and then Zabu timing with Rock Slide. Rock Slide becoming relevant right when he gets his Christmas skin shortly after. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, this this card is just really proven to be quite powerful. Um, I'm 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 jealous I'm jealous, Teddy, that you got this combo because it seems really fun. <laughs> yeah, the stat line is just pretty premium, even if he doesn't. So most four cost, if we look at like the whole category, they have a lower floor than Hawk, and then right. they'll bump up the like you know getting your four nine is good. Hawk's ceiling is even higher, and his floor is generally higher as well. So he's just fantastic 
because you're looking at what the, the poor seven if you don't play any assistance and then you give him just a uh, Korg who's fine to play as a one cost and you're already making money right at the the four nine and so then you get even anything on top of that and you're just off to the races oh yeah oh this is so much value from disruption building a deck with disruption and then also buffing your cards is just such a nasty combo love it so before we get into zabu and what he might be able to do with any of these other four cost cards we have silver surfer Silver Surfer mm. is, again, the tip of the spear of the meta, Battle Pass card from yesteryear. Um, <laughs> but he just got downgraded into Series 5. At what point, Drew, are you going to recommend that people would pick up such a... He's a pivotal card, but you also know that he's dropping monthly. So so how would you recommend like that, that balance? This one is such a difficult question to answer, I, I, I feel, because... Silver Surfer is very powerful right now, and it's setting up a lot of infinite decks where you see a lot of the top of the meta decks, you're seeing like Sarah Surfer, Negative Surfer, whatever have you. There's a bunch of different ways you can play this card. Um, but then also sometimes we see shifts in the meta where it completely counters this kind of deck and it's really difficult to overcome. I think the Leech Leader combination spawned because of Silver Surfer becoming so prevalent in the meta. And then it, Leech Leader just destroys Silver Surfer completely. You just retreat if you get leeched. Um, so things like that can make it a bit vulnerable. And if you're spending 6k tokens on something that might not work out, it's tough. But but overall, I can't deny the strength of Silver Surfer. The power boost that you can get when it does work is fantastic. I think I'll leave it with this. This is, I think, my final opinion on this. If you have a few of the Series 3 cards that work very, very well with Silver Surfer, I'm talking like Sarah, uh, Brood, Maximus, you know, a couple of those key pieces. I think it's a worthwhile purchase to get it early before it drops on sale. If you haven't accumulated those yet and you see him roll in your shop, I wouldn't pin him trying to save up for that. I think there's just other pieces that you can probably acquire and build your collection out. That's where I'm at. Yeah, I think I'm going to be a little cagier with the recommendation on spending this many tokens. And on Series 5, I'm going to definitely say wait for the sale. But Series 4, I'm going to have to do a lot more thinking here in the next month of am I going to recommend him as a as a full recommendation or still wait for that bump down because his stat line is absolutely incredible. Okay, so next question also on Silver Surfer. Cynical uh, game dev time. At what point can they nerf him? Because he was a premium card. You can't... You, you basically are caught, right? You either hotfix him immediately, but then you have people who paid money for him, and then after that you have people who pay tokens for him. And it's such bad optics so that as soon as it becomes Series 3, hello, all you free-to-play sheeple, he's nerfed into the ground. You can't do that, right? Right? Oh, uh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You're preaching to the choir here, Teddy, because I don't want to plug my channel or anything, but I did make a video early, like, like before the uh, token thing came out and or right after and i talked about problems with the economy and one of the issues that i wanted to raise was that what happens uh balance versus uh, compensation so uh d just because the card's cheaper now like you said in series three we can now balance the card we feel like we're not going to hurt the player base's um desire to spend money on these cards because they don't have to worry about it being nerfed um or is balance more important i'm of the opinion that even if i bought it day one of release and then and then a week later it gets nerfed if it's for the health of the game i feel like that just has to be prioritized um but it, it would make everybody super nervous about buying cards day one that they're released so it's a really awkward spot in silver surfers condition and pos position right now i feel like they're going to leave him as is um and then i i could see a minor change uh, next month honestly even just one power going to like negative one power let's say just totally spitballing i'm not really suggesting that but just as an example um i, I feel like they could do that and not wait until series three because they have um they have nerfed uh higher series cards right galactus I galactus think, is, is the only one. one galactus is the, is the only one the only one to ever been nerfed and he never drops yeah, so yeah. oh man i think you're onto something with like their philosophy behind balancing and, and and the economy and kind of waiting it out or maybe they just feel stuck and they're not they haven't figured it out yet yeah we'll have to see i would love to see some wholesale changes to surfer there's kind of i was on um can't stop snapping podcast with west for best and he had this take of basically with the way the numbers are balanced in the game two is the magic number of balance 
Three is the magic number of overpowered. They made Ronin a plus three for a single month, and there was like, it ran the table out of, it came out of nowhere and ran the table with everybody, and then they give Surfer the plus three, it's too much. Bring him down to the plus two, give him maybe a point on his body to compensate, and then I think that he's in a, in a healthy place. But we'll see what happens. Yes, I totally agree. That is, that is a really good point. Shout out to Wes. I love Wes. He's awesome. Uh, but yes, uh, the three power is just outrageous. It just creates for these really heavy-handed swings. It's funny, too, because um, as an early beta player, I'm sure you're familiar with when Nova would give two power. And that felt yeah. too crazy, right? Um, <laughs> it was. And, and, it was. And, and it was. Yeah, it was. And, and then even I think Okoye at one point was giving plus two to your whole deck. And that had to get nerfed. And they had to go to one. Um, their effects are a little bit more um, difficult to pull off or requires a little bit more help compared to Silver Surfer. You just have to play three drops, which you're doing anyways. Um, so I, I would agree. Maybe go do it. So, you, so you, is that your suggestion? Are you thinking two power is a place to be? And then, and then would you do anything else with Silver Surfer to, to offset that nerf or leave it as is? I would give Surfer like one or two points on the body, but it just... The fact that okay. just Brood and Surfer is like more value than other three costs is too much. You're comboing yeah. him with only one other card and you're above tempo, that's crazy. And then with the Serolus, we've obviously she seen she can manufacture what, like 25 points on the final turn or even more? It's oh, yeah. it's stupid. Well, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it's 25 <laughs> just on the, um, the Brood and the Max Surfer alone. And then if you played any other three costs prior, it's even more. It's, it's too yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here for that. I'm here for that. Yeah. Final pieces for us to cover. We have uh, the Zabu helping out all of these four cost cards. Without the help, I don't know if any of these would ever see play. Who do you think has the best chance? Well, I'm going to write off Sentry already. Uh, he released last <laughs> month. It was in the fanboy potential with if Viper playing around the void was going to be enough. I haven't yeah. seen anybody even pull it off. I'm going to leave him down in the just bad. Uh, category, but then Dazzler, Shadow King, Janna, the She Devil. Who out of these three do you think has the best chance of, I guess, surprising us if the initial take is that we're not super high on these cards? Yeah, um, I think in terms of the surprise factor, I actually think Dazzler might have a bit of a surprise value. Um, it's not her condition of filling the entire your entire side of the board. I don't think is that difficult or is as difficult as people may think uh especially if you're running ultron right yeah you yeah. just throw it into that ultron deck it's a pretty easy sweep to fill the rest of the board you're probably already stacking cards at the ultron location and talking like your your kzars or your patriots or what have you right um and then getting a little bit extra power at that location i think helps a lot sometimes i find i'm relying on the drones to get me the win uh, because I've, you know, I haven't invested too much power. I'm playing like Patriot and Mystique or something like that at the Ultron location. So if I was able to put Dazzler out there, get that bonus power, and then maybe the only thing that I want to preface by talking about this is I don't think I would spend the premium 6k tokens on her. I would still wait for sale, like you said. Like even if I'm talking this card up, like there's a potential combo here. I, 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 I don't know. I still don't know about it. Um, but I do like it with Zabu, like you mentioned, you know, give that discount. She's a little bit cheaper. She can get up to 10 power, which is a high premium. Uh, so maybe, but there's a lot of conditions there that have to be met. Um, which one, which one catches your eye? I think it has to be the control piece of Shadow King. The control cards have always shown that when their niche comes around, they can excel. So maybe they'll be, honestly, the meta right now with how good Surfer is, Shadow King will be the undo button, but because Surfer's coming in on the last turn, it's really hard for Shadow King to be able to take effect. If only he was ongoing. Oh, if only uh, he yeah. was ongoing. Maybe they yeah. can change that. Um, <laughs> but also with Shuri, if Shuri becoming going down in the um, series and also Bast, Shadow King is your answer. So if we think that the Series 5 cards that are downgrading to Series 4 are suddenly going to be everywhere, and their decks are going to be a lot more popular. Shadow King could be the control card that you go to. Fun fact, did you see this article that the internal data from Second Dinner says that Shang-Chi is the worst card in the game based on win rate? What? Maybe you need to bring in Shadow King instead of your uh, Shang-Chi. Lowest win rate is the Shang-Chi because he's empty so often. Um, Wait, is that when played or when drawn? Or when, when in deck. In the deck. In, in... Wow. Yeah. That's that's surprising. 
statistics right there. So if you're going to look to go away from Shang-Chi to something more reliable, of course the Enchantress is calling your name and her siren call is hard to ignore, but the Shadow King could be the alternate option because Sarah doesn't present many Shang-Chi targets. Um, mm -hmm. Shadow King could be able to clip them. There's also the Mr. Negative who doesn't produce many Shang-Chi targets. Enchantress is doing well there, but the Shadow King could as well. So I think there's, there's options for him. Do you have any final comments on the recommendations for the list? We've covered everything in, through Series 3 to Series 5. I'm really loving where the game is at with the, um, the drops coming and then being able to keep the list updated on the monthly. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very content with how they did that. I also especially love that they gave us advance notice of these drops, and I hope they continue to do so. It seems that way. Um, or actually, it just seems like there's going to be a natural rotation that we can rely on, which is fantastic, because uh, then you can just like this whole, the purpose of the failure, you can uh, decide to wait for sale or pick it up now. So I think that's just uh, really healthy for the game, especially long term. Um, my, my final thought would just be that uh, I am uh, someone who plays Marvel Snap to have fun. Uh, I don't hit infinite, I don't even really try to rank all too hard, I play silly a lot of the time and that's how I get the most enjoyable experience out of Snap. Um, so I would just recommend, you know, use your tokens on the cards that you really want to play with, you know? Like, like if you're looking to rank up, I think we just did an excellent guide on some of the key pieces that you can pick up. Um, but if you really want to play with Lockjaw, it's a really fun card pick lockjaw up you know there's just all kinds of really fun cards uh, so just you know just look look for what you want most and i think that's the best thing I yeah can recommend the, the definitive answer of is this card worth the tokens well after you've consulted this list is are you planning on playing it if you're planning on playing the card it's certainly nice. worth the tokens because at the end of the day it's a game it's a hobby we're here for fun and so if you have a list queued up or you think that it just seems really cool and you want to make it work spending your tokens there is going to be worth your time all right so we have come to the end of this month's version of the list. We're going to be doing this on the monthly, so we'll be back next month with an updated version with the new cards that are going to be coming. Once we know the new drops, we'll be updating the list there as well. And here on the Teddy Ninja channel, we're going to be doing videos on all of the cards that are moving down in a series to be able to get you starter lists if you happen to come into acquisition of any of those. Now, Drew over on his channel has started building quite the reputation for covering card leaks and uh, card evaluations. Do you want to plug where people can find more from you, Drew? Yeah, I mean, just uh, Drew Barry Snap on YouTube. Just come come hang out. You know, we're doing all kinds of fun things. We're talking about new cards coming, updates, but we also do a lot of custom cards, which people love doing. Uh, so we're just having a good time trying challenges and stuff. So I uh, appreciate you to come out and hang out. Uh, Teddy, thank you so much. This was awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was great doing the collab with you. We'll have to meet up again. And with friendly battles, we'll have to throw down the gauntlet and see Ooh, who yeah, can try up in the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Exciting things yeah. to come here in Snap. Thank you guys for watching. We'd love to hear all of your comments on our recommendations uh, down in the comments below. Talk everything snap down there. Until next time, thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.